let's tie up a squirmy wormy get this stuff some of this stuff here it's a kid's toy but they sell it on Amazon as squirmy wormy material there's my orange pink and orange seem to be the best at least at, at getting the uh, where oh there it is uh getting the attention of the fish uh, even though today i was on the river and uh, i caught them on a yellow one that i had fancified and i caught them on a pink and i caught them on an orange all right I'm going to tie these on a size 8 typical streamer hook, but I'm going to turn it into a jig hook by adding a little kink in the top part of it so that it runs hook up. This is pretty much designed like a clouser, sort of, kind of. This first one will be with B chain eyes. I'll go ahead and take that, tilt that up just a little bit. See how I did that? Uh oh, just dropped my thing. All right, you're gonna thread it up like almost every fly ever. Thread this thing up. Go back to the bind. Go back to the front. This part is just about like a clouser would normally be. Put that there. Alright, so we'll run that back. I want these eyes to be pretty far forward, so I'm going to try to get them right on that bend. Right there is perfect. And we're going to secure the heck out of them. Not that it matters. Who cares? They already rolled backward for me. Pull those back a little bit. Oh, these are really being unruly. I didn't get it locked in good enough. Oh, good night. Come on. Alright. You want to go on that side? No, you want to be on this side. Yeah. There we go. All right, once you get that in place, run your thread all the way to the back again, and then come back up. Start right about there. Now, what I like, a little shorter tail. I found that a little shorter tail seems to be better. And how I have been doing this is I've been catching it on the eyeballs. Here, just like this. That rounded end one is the one I want. But once you get those, pull on a little bit. This stuff is really pretty tough. But loosely, loosely wrap this around. Very loosely. You don't want to cinch it down because you'll cut through this material. Down to the back. And go loosely back up. I've seen these things where they use dubbing on your line. They dub it up real good. I don't think that's necessary. Now, once you've got that, you got two ends. This is the one that's going to stay out the back. I'm going to take this one. I might do well, it. Yeah, we'll do like I've been doing. See how it's going to it's going to wrap a little bit. There we go. And you start to wrap this stuff up the top. And it is a squirmy material. But you see it makes a really nice segmented body. Latch it in, grab a hold of it again, latch it in. 
latch it in. You can leave that on there if you wanted to. I don't. I cut that off. And then I'm going to take a palmered feather. In this case, it's just going to be a little one. And I'm going to... Any feather will do. This just makes a little bit of a guard. I mean, you can make these things just like that. Nothing else added to it. And the fish will eat it just like just like they will with this guard on it. But I think it makes it look a little more flyish. A little more like a normal fly if you have this on here and I'm just gonna palmer that right around the back of the eyes just enough Oop, lost my grip just enough come on hang on to it all right there we go now let's go ahead and just double wrap over this and latch it in and then we're going to whip this thing we're going to whip it right there and then we'll hit it with a little dot of super glue I don't care if this thing is super tight a couple of half hitches or a whip, however you want to do it. And one little dot of super glue on that back of that thread. Push it down, and there you go. Cut your thread. Just like that. And it should run more or less like this. Hook up just like that. Let's get a little closer look. Come on, focus. There you go. That is a simple fly, and they catch fish like you would not believe. Make them different colors. Maybe change the pattern up a little bit. Maybe bring your hackle to the back and then palmer it forward with this material or just use some other kind of material for the body. I've done it a bunch of different ways. But this is the simplest. All right, let's try another pattern. I've been working on. And this is even simpler because it doesn't involve a great deal of... Uh, a cone head. Oh, and this is a 1-8 tungsten bead head I'm going to put that on this streamer hook and this is the same streamer hook as before it's a number 8 I don't know what the brand is it's a good brand um, Oompa or something like that Get a bead don't drop it put it on this hook small hole forward oh, come on there it is small hole forward now I'm going to show you another one now, I have not tested this particular flavor but it is way simple what we're going to do is we're going to dub this line let me find my dubbing here's some dubbing right here we we'll use drier lint for dubbing started oh yeah that's some nasty looking dubbing 
Use better stuff. That's literally drier lint. All right, I'm gonna take an orange one this time. Is that what I used the last time? Yeah, it is. I'm gonna use a pink one. This is a more simple rendition of this. And I'm gonna determine how much I want out the back, which is not gonna be a lot. It's gonna be that much right there. And then you use this dubbed line to make the middle of the fly. Like I said, this is ugly. This ain't working very well. That is turning out to be super ugly. But you get the idea. I didn't get a good dub. I didn't get a good dubbing on that. The surprising part is, is this would work just fine. And the idea is that you put it in the middle of the worm and I like for these cut ends, I like to take this and catch it on fire. And then flatten it out. I do it on both ends on this one. Right, let me trim that back just a little. Three cats in there. No, just two. The two big boys. Alright. Do that. Spin it up behind the bead. The bead gets a little more weight. And there you go. That is essentially the fly. And I, I'm telling you. It's an amazing thing. The fish will eat this thing. They think it's real. All right, I'm going to make a modification. I'm just going to tear this apart and make it into a different fly. All right. Instead of tearing it apart, I decided I'd go ahead and wrap the body with the other piece here. Right up to the end. That looks way better. Just cut off that excess up top. Now you see it's got a body with some stuff sticking out of it. Let's trim that back a little. Call it good. Don't want to waste a good fly. some sorry thread. I don't know what that is, but it's some sorry thread. It falls apart while you're trying to use it. Okay, now let's make a squiggly worm that's intended more for bass. Same process, starting with a number six hook. Straight up streamer hook. I'm going to do the same thing with this, and then I'm going to make it more jig-like by taking this and bending it forward and hoping it doesn't break. There we go. Alright. Uh, I want those eyes. I want the eyes to end up behind this. Matter of fact, I'm not even going to use that socket thread. I'm going to get my really good... I think it's denier. Nope. Uni nylon. 210. This is the this is the strong stuff. So we're going with black. It's gonna start with green thread. I mean uh, it's gonna start with green materials, but I'm gonna take a sharpie marker to it. 
All right, we're gonna put those B chain eyes, and I think I got some dark ones. I do. I got a couple of these left. A couple of these dark ones left, charcoal colored. And I'm gonna put them back far enough here. This thing is built with the intention of it running hook up, so it becomes a little more weedless without being fishless. Cut that. We gotta anchor these real good. Cross pattern till they go square for me. Alright, and then we X over. Perfect. Then we take a green squirmy or a yellow squirmy. I think I actually used a yellow one. Yeah, I think I used a yellow one. No, I used... Yeah, I used yellow. I'm going to use a yellow one like this. We take this. Now watch this. Let's watch what I'm doing. Let me get all that crap out of the way. Oh, come on, keep losing my scissors. The thread kind of came apart on me. All right, that's a straight one. All right, you take this one. There's the end I want for the back. It's got a nice little rounded, and I want it to stick out about yay far. I go ahead and go up and round and back, and then I pull them both. I stretch them out, and then I very carefully, but very gently, very loose wraps. I don't want to pull on this at any point other than at the last when it's all the way back up front. I'm just going to run this down the hook bend nice and gentle. And then we're going to come up and tighten. Get progressively tighter loops. All right, we're going to put this back in front of there. We're going to take the long end and start palmering the body. I'm going to go ahead and let it pull that around. And this stuff, this stuff, when you stretch it out, it makes a neat looking body. Very buggy. And the, the tighter you pull it, the more it flattens out. Alright, we got this up. I'm going to X over the eyeballs again. That'll secure this stuff in. Alright, there you go. And we cut off the excess. Now, what I'm going to do is I've got these spinnerbait skirt. The spinnerbait skirt stuff. I'm going to go ahead and use three of them. And we're going to pull them all together like this. I'm going to use two of them to have four legs instead of six. Basically hold them at half. Catch it over the hook. Tuck it up underneath. Same thing. X over. And it latches those in. Pull them back to the center. I want them on the top of the hook. And then I got these green feathers. We take one of these green feathers. Keep in mind this is this is another squirmy wormy, but it's a big fly. Pull that back so you can put it on here. Anchor this right. Back behind the back here. Just like that. You're going to cut off that little extra piece there. Anchor it real good. Go back to the front and begin to palmer this. I'm going to go ahead and cut that out of the way first. This is one of the flies. Oh, that looked good. Okay, that did fine. Alright, and then we're going to palmer this. A few wraps, not so many. Doesn't take a lot. That's going to be just about right. Trap that fly. Trap, trap that feather, I should say. 
All right, I'm going to cut that thing excess out of the way. I'm going to pull them back so that I can trap the entire thing and then give it a nice little collar and then whip it. I did that in green or yellow pull that tail I want it to actually curve up they this material semi floats All right, I'm gonna put a dot of super glue on those threads on the very bottom cool fly it should go through the water like this that tail is up and these are up so I'll probably make that work better I'm gonna go ahead and make a slight modification with this I'm gonna pull it and pierce it Just like that, so it stays put behind the fly. Look at that. And that is a buggy fly. Now I'm going to take my magic markers and I'm going to color this up so that it has a yellow, a yellow underside. Let's see if I can grab a hold of this hook. Some kind of way. I will do it from this side. I'm going to put dots and bands on this thing. I grabbed the wrong one. You hear that? Play music. the body check both sides and take the longer pieces stretch them a little give them the old bumblebee pattern that stuff about half of it wears off and there you go that's a fly to be proud of and I, I can almost guarantee at least in the Brazos River this will catch fish I caught fish today on something very similar as you'll see in the video prior to making this fly. That's a nice fly. Look at that thing. That dog, it can't get my hands positioned right. Look at that. <laughs> That's a sorry view. 